What's going on, everyone from Low Kick MMA? My name is Dave Podolsky. I'm joined with Kalen Lochran. He is set to return to the UFC Octagon on March 30th in Atlantic City when he takes on Angel Pacheco. Kalen, thank you so much for taking the time. Anytime, brother. Anytime. First off, I think I went one for two on the name. It's Kalen Lochran. Yeah, that's just spot on. That's spot on. Um, so obviously you're training out in Liverpool about a week mm -hmm. and a half out from the fight. When do you uh, head out to Atlantic City? Uh, this time next week, I'll be in Atlantic I'll go out Monday. I'm actually not sure what time for. I fly to Dublin, and then Dublin to Philly. And I'm going to be in 5 p.m. Philly time on the Monday. I'll be there, which is actually ideal. It's not really much of a time change. You don't need to go too early. Like, So I'll be here at 5 p.m. Philly. So my thinking is land like 5 p.m. No matter how I feel, just go get a sweat immediately. And then stay awake till like 11, 12 o'clock. I think I'll wake up on the Tuesday basically on time. Maybe one extra day, but not much of a no jet lag really there, you know? From Philadelphia, you head up to Atlantic City. Is that going to be, you know, day before the fight, a couple days before? No, no, I'm going go to go straight to the fight hotel from the Monday night. Got it, got it. Yeah, and yeah. so Atlantic City, right, your last fight, you were on the road in France, you know, Irish fighter going into enemy territory. This time, though, I'd say it's going to be, I mean, Angel Pacheco is the American, but yeah. I'll probably be more neutral on this one. How are you anticipating, you know, the reaction when you take uh, your walkout? Uh, I'm bringing the most people I've ever brought to fight in my life to this one, lad. Belfast, uh, Dublin, anywhere. Liverpool, I've never so this because the Irish people on the East Coast, mm -hmm. from New York, I'm sorry, the West Coast people, just Irish people in America who are just living there. They're just coming like Gaelic like football teams are coming as groups, so uh, it won't be like Paris, but that way, <laughs> no. And I, and I will say too, like when McGregor's breakout performance is arguably it's in Boston against, um, yeah, yeah, like it was the fight before Mendes. I'm blinking off the top of my head, but it's in Boston, Siever. Dennis Seaver, Dennis Seaver. There you go, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Q. Um, yeah, yeah. but like McGregor's breakout is in Boston, you know, Ian Gary just put on a great performance in Boston. LA is mm. somewhat close, but I feel like the East Coast of America, it's got a pretty solid following uh, of Irish fighters. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's built New York, man, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah. Talk to me about that, li that last fight camp. You know, you're – or not even, not even the fight camp, but fight week. You know, you go in there, you play the heel the entire week, the opponent <laughs> change, you know, you're getting booed at the weigh-ins. <laughs> And you were just owning every bit of it, playing that full bit of the heel. You know, how how did that experience kind of turn out for you, you know, before you even got to the fight? It was a mad one, lad, I'll tell you that. Uh, it was uh, done a lot of living in three days. <laughs> it was a fight week's like a mad half emotional time anyway. You're cutting weight. You've never done, never, I've never been in the UFC before. Like, Cage War is a big show over here, but it's, it's another nothing compared like the UFC in terms like the amount of media I was getting and the interviews and you're fucking for the first time seeing all these people I see on TV and they're, they're in front of me talking to me but I'm the one was fucking stealing the show it was just mad all together and uh, then on top of that my, all flights coming out of the UK and the mon Monday was banned so I had to miss I had to miss a day to get I was a day late getting there and then as I get there I find out my opponents changed and then I just get all this booze. It was a lot. It was a mad week for one week. Let me tell you, <laughs> but uh, a lot of experience. Um, just, just, uh, just a good, 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 uh, good memories. Got better. Didn't get the win. Although I think it's a good argument that it was a close fight. I don't know. Didn't get the win, but got better, lad, and uh, enjoyed enjoyed the week, you know, enjoyed my UFC debut. It was it was a mad one. No, it was a fucking mad one. <laughs> so, I got two questions off that. The, the first one's going to be, talk to me about that change of opponent. You're supposed to fight Giannis Gamori. Turns out, yeah. on fight week, they switch around the opponents. Gamori goes up to 45. You get uh, Taylor Lapalus. How did mm. that uh, change of opponent kind of affect, you know, both the fight itself and then just fight week as a whole? Uh, the fight game is a is a crazy game. Loud, it's uh, it's just it's just mental, and it, it's that's quite like especially as I was coming up as like a prospect in the UK, 
guys would pull out on me all the time and it would happen. Like, it's just part of fighting. It's absolutely shite, but it's part of fighting. Uh, I was still confident I'd beat Laplace. I knew it was a tough, really, really tough entry fight. Just on three days. Like, I think he's a tricky opponent for anybody in the top 15 on three days' notice. But uh, I learned a lot of lessons from, from a guy with that type of experience. Uh, Fundaments was quite annoying, but uh, no, it's just fighting lad. I don't uh, don't get too high on the highs and I don't get too low on the lows. It's uh, part of the game, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask. Obviously, the result didn't go your way. It was a very close fight. Um, mm. but, you know, you come in as this undefeated eight no prospect, and now it's you're going to your second fight eight and one. You're coming off mm. the loss. How does that kind of change the mindset a little bit? And you almost feel like it could be a benefit. Obviously, you don't want to lose that fight, but now that you have a loss, it's kind of like, okay, I know what it's like to go in there in the cage and get that loss. And, you know, oftentimes analysts will talk about, like, when a fighter's undefeated, they feel almost invincible. And Do you feel like now that you yeah. have a loss, it's almost like, all right, at least I got that out of the way? Uh, no, I've had a lot of fights in combat sports through professional MMA, amateur MMA. In the last 10 years, there were probably 30 MMA fights. It wasn't my first loss in a, in a cage. Like, I'd been there before. Mm -hmm. I was a realist, um, but it 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 still sucks. Like it's a fuck. I'm a competitor. I'm a winner. But in that fight, I literally had never lost a professional round. Over here, like the the hardest way to go through is to be a kind of a champion in cage wars in Europe. But I done that literally, again, never lost a round and finished everybody. So mm -hmm. it's definitely foreign to me. It's not uh, not what I'm used to, but. I look up to guys like that. Every good story comes from guys like that. Like my favorite fighter, like I'm no one's fanboy, but the likes of Dustin, DP, the way he comes up, the way he talks about the journey, and even that last one, like he come off back to back losses, just been knocked out of Gucci. You got this young guy coming up making all noise, and he just knocks him clean out. Like uh, this game's mental, lad, but uh, I love it. The UFC bantamweight division is absolutely fucking nuts. Marab is probably the toughest guy in the division the minute to beat. He went 0-2 in the UFC. It made him a 7-4 pro. Do you know what I mean? Nobody really... A lot of hardcores don't even know that, but that's the way it is. Chito Vera just fought for the belt. I don't know how many times he's lost, but he's... It's the game, lads. But it's like... It's why we love the UFC. The best fight the best, and that's it. I don't... Uh, it doesn't change anything in my mind. But uh, you can't get in that losing mentality, that's for sure, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, certainly for you, you know, uh, still, you're still a young, up-and-coming prospect. And, you know, it's not like, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and even that fight against Lapalus, as you said, Taylor Lapalus is a tough opponent, especially on short notice. And, yeah, yeah. you know, it's not like you got, it's not like you took this crazy amount of damage. So I think future is very much still bright. Um, I didn't want to ask, though, because you mentioned – the Dustin Poirier knockout. He obviously just knocked mm. out uh, Benoit saint -Denis, French. I know you had mm. a little back and forth with the French fans, and they gave you, <laughs> they gave you an earful that whole that whole fight week last time. But I got to ask, you know, wh wh what's your stance on French MMA at this point? Uh, I don't I don't knock them. <laughs> I wound them up because obviously Cedar Dumbe just lost with that splinter in his toe. And then uh, Benoit Saint-Denis lost. <laughs> And uh, so I've seen this meme of like French MMA and I sh I shared it and goes the lights go out in France and they slated me again but I was only joking like I don't <laughs> I don't hold it to them to be honest it's probably like the hub of European MMA at the minute even with the PFL the crowds are insane but uh, fuck them I'd love to go back to Paris some stage in my life fight another French guy I'm I don't care if they boo me like I uh, fuck them if you slate me uh, 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 I'm not your friend but that way. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. You know, the UFC has gone to Paris now back to back years. It's not mm. booked yet, but I'm assuming they'll go back in the summer. Is Probably. that is that a card you'd want to get back on again? I mean, I would do it. Like, uh, no, uh, to be honest, no. I like this not immediately like, down the line, maybe, but like, I love the experience. Like, last the, in the last year, I went to Rome to win a Cage Wars title, Paris to be in the UFC debut. Now I'm going for the first fight in the States. I like the going about and the seeing different cities. But there's talk about UFC Manchester in July, talk about maybe making it a pay-per-view, but this still hasn't been announced. But that would be good for me. Because I train here in Liverpool, I'm 40 minutes from the road from Manchester. A lot of people come from Ireland 
ideally that would be my next fight. But down the line, I'd like to go back to Paris, definitely. I. <laughs> I was gonna say, you, you kind of answered what my next question was going to be. And I actually two of them, because I was going to say, Hey, your first fight in the States for this one. And then mm. that Manchester card in, I think, sorry, June or July. I'm not sure the exact date right. on it, but that's a card yeah. that I feel like if you're healthy, we got to get you on that card. A hundred percent. I I say I live in Liverpool most of the year. It's literally, I'm on the end of the motorway. I'm, I'm 35 minutes from where that would be. So I'd, I'd love to be in that arena, mm. but that's, like there's talks, there's rumors of July. There's still no. They're saying that like because the owners of Man City have apparently built this like biggest arena in the UK now, indoor arena. So there's talk that's going to be there, but it still hasn't been announced. I don't know, but uh, absolutely, I'd love to be in that time and it would work. Successful for me as of living here, and then for everyone to come travel. So that would be ideal. But die, uh, this one's in the states. That is special. Every fighter from over here's dream like to get the uh, stateside to fight in the UFC. So. I'm looking forward to this one, lad. I. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the Atlantic City card. There's a lot of fires from Philadelphia, a lot of fires from that New York area. But you're also fighting with, you know, another Welshman who's actually fighting on the Irish flag. That's Reese McKee. Uh, how are you feeling about, you know, you're kind of bringing the Irish presence over? You mentioned that you're bringing a lot of fans, but do you feel like the Irish presence is really going to hold out uh, at at this fight card? Oh, I I swear to God, I've never brought. Like, I don't know, but, like, from messages I'm getting, it would appear I've never brought more people in my life. I think there's probably a few hundred people there, like, which is class. Um, Yeah, crazy experience. I've got a lot of people live there, and some people are flying over. Some people are in New York for St. Paddy's and are just staying, like, till that fucking 13 days. Like, that's crazy. My mates and that. So, uh, no, it's it's uh, it's going to be good, lad. I'm sure Angel will have... Uh, when he gets announced that he's fighting out of that area, he'll get a big pop from the crowd too. But mm-hmm. that's all. That doesn't really matter. It'll be fun at the way and stuff. But like, once you're in there, you're in there. That um, uh, I've got a job on. I've got. I have to win this thing. So they could be twenty five thousand people cheering me or twenty thousand uh, twenty five thousand people booing me. If anything, Paris will tell you is like I don't. I don't care if people boo me. Like so, <laughs> it is what it is, lad. You know. Hey, I think Daniel Cormier once said, "You can you can hate me or love me, boo me or cheer me on, no matter what. I'm making money." Facts. <laughs> um, but you know, before because obviously I'm gonna ask you about Pacheco in this fight specifically. The last place I do want to ask you about is Ireland. Obviously, they haven't gone there in a while, but McGregor's possibly making a return, and Ian Gary is now you know into the top ten, and he's becoming one of the you know stars of the sport again. Another guy with Ian Gary, where it's like whether you love him or hate him. People are always talking about him. Do you think you yeah. can go back to Ireland soon? And obviously, that's a card you'd want to get on. Yeah, one million percent. If I'm, I'm, I'm just focusing on me. If Ian, like at the minute, I'm not bringing them back this year, obviously. But if Ian keeps winning, it's very possible. If I get a win here, get a win in Manchester in July, because at a ma- there's talk of him and Kobe now, isn't there? Where they're going back and forth. I can't see that being in Dublin in the summer, especially if they're coming to Manchester. I can't see them coming to Manchester and Dublin. So end of the year, it's very possible. I could be going to that. But, well, I plan to be, obviously plan to beating an angel. And then I plan on winning in July. Obviously not overlooking angel. But that could be good then. I could be going for a third win of the year. But uh, I have Ian keeps winning. It's definitely possible. Uh, I hope so. That would, of course, it would obviously be a dream come true. I was in school and too broke to afford a ticket to McGregor versus Brando in 2014. Uh, but I was, I remember watching it like it was yesterday. Um, li- I literally remember it like it was yesterday. Um, so that would be that would be cool, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, transitioning back into your fight, right? You're fighting Angel Pacheco. He's coming off yeah. contender series. Uh, yeah. have, have you gotten to watch the f- previous footage on him? What stands out to you? What do you think gives you the advantage over him? Uh, everywhere. I don't. I think I beat him everywhere. I think I'm a better boxer, and I know I'm a better grappler. Um, he's coming down to thirty five. He's got a lot of heart. I give him that a lot of grit, but he's never done this weight cut in his life. Ever, literally, never one time could beat one hundred thirty five pounds, and he's going to do this weight cut for the first time against my pressure. I think that's, I think that's absolutely nuts. To be honest, mm-hmm. and so. so that, 
I'm done. Go oh, ahead, sorry. No, sorry. Go ahead. I just I expect them to be very heavy legged after seven minutes and to put them away. That's what I expect, though. And for yourself, you know, what improvements have you made since the fight with Taylor Lapolis? You know, end up being about seven months away from the cage for you. That's the longest gap I've had in about seven, eight years. Like I never, I suppose COVID maybe there's longer. I can't remember. That's a long time, but uh, it was needed because, like I, I said it openly. Even ever Bashrat just fought Lapolis, he said he's a top fifteen guy. You just don't know it yet. Bashrat said that openly. Um, I think me and Taylor like Lapolis could definitely win the top fifteen now. So I think I would end up very high level entry fight on three days notice. It's a big step back, which is something I never want to do in my career, but still a hard fucking fight. Like, I'm not delusional. Like, this is the UFC. He's a fucking good fighter. He's part and he's coming to knock me out. Like, I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But uh, I think I'll have too much for him, lad. I think I've uh, beat better guys. I've come up the hard way through Cage Wars, won the title, went way in. But uh, I think if I had a win still in, like, a wee entry level fight, you'd have a lot of hype. But took. I took a, a big jump in to the deep end, really, on that fight, and it was a good thing. He took, it's just so many wee subtle things a guy with that type of experience has that you can't really learn in the gym. That environment, you can't replicate that in the gym. There's just so many things. But it's all, like, we've got so much tactical things from the fight to improve, but doesn't matter until you do it under the bright lights, you know what I mean? There's only one time that actually matters, so I wouldn't even know where to start, lad, and where I, what I took from that last fight, but it uh, doesn't matter if I can't put it into practice next Saturday, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. a lot of things, a lot of things take from it, like experience, like you can't buy it, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, so you kind of wrote out to me you want to get that Manchester card, possibly Dublin later, but at the when you look at the big picture of 2024, if all goes well and you beat Angel Pacheco, you know, give me your full plan for this year. Is it three wins in 2024 and top 15 going into next year? That is literally hit the nail on the head, lad. 3-0 and this year. And this, that's the crazy thing of the UFC Bantico division because everybody, I think it's three guys who haven't lost in in the actual UFC. You ought to count O'Malley's the Cheeto. He'd be an actual one, but he did lose the first time. Can't remember who it is. It was, was Javid Bashar. I just thought it was like it's Umar, the other Bashar brother. And there's, I can't remember, it's like four guys. So UFC guys lose all the time at the Bantu division. Umar was ranked, I think, 12th when he was 4 0. So if I go 3 0 this year, I have to be you're in a good position. So I'm not uh, looking too far ahead. I'm not even worried about specific faces so much. I just want to win, lad, and uh, starts this Saturday. But 3 0 this year is definitely, definitely the goal. And a, a bonus along the way would be nice too. <laughs> Definitely. Keelan, you know, I'm wish you the best of luck. My last question, right? March 30th, Kalen Lochran, Angel Pacheco, Kalen, give me your official prediction. I'm going to knock about seven minutes. He's going to get tired and I'm going to bingo him. Fair enough. I don't think you need to say much more. Bye, gay. <laughs> Guys, Kalen Lochran returns to the Octagon on March 30th when he takes on Angel Pacheco at Lake City. You will not want to miss this fight. Caleb, if there are any sponsors, socials you want to shout out, the platform is yours. My Instagram is at DonCaleb135, and all my sponsors are under the Atlantic City highlights, so go check all them out because too many to name and forget them, but without them, I couldn't do this, so thank you so much, and check them out there. Awesome. Caleb, thank you so much for taking the time. Best of luck to you in Atlantic City, and we'll talk soon. Thank you very much, Scott. Keep it us. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.